What's up guys? So if you watch very many of my videos, you're gonna find out really quick, I love coffee. Not just any coffee. I am a coffee snob. And one of the things that I've wanted to do for a long time is a coffee cupping. It's a great place to learn about coffee. Where it comes from, how that affects the flavors, type of flavors you can expect from certain types of coffee, differences between coffees from different regions, the subtle differences in notes between coffees, but I haven't had the chance to do that until today. So I'm going to a cafe and coffee roaster in Baton Rouge called French Truck. A French Truck is one of my favorite coffee roasters, so I'm really excited to go learn from them and do this cup. This is our peer-review driven system to assess the quality of coffees. Driven on a 100 point system, anything over 80 points is considered specialty. Everything on this table will be over 80 points. 80 to 84 is specialty. 85 to 88 is great. 88 to 90 is fantastic. You're 90 and above, you are in excellence territory. One coffee on this table that was cupping at a 91. If you want to go around and look at the beans in whole bean form before we grind them, you're not going to get too much of a fragrance right away until we grind it. We're going to go ahead and grind these coffees. There are two scents that we will be experiencing, the fragrance and the aroma. Fragrance is our dry smell of the coffee. Aroma is the wet smell after we've introduced water. You can't expect a different sensation between the aroma and the fragrance. Tasting analysis, you smell something, you taste something, and it triggers a memory of something else. It reminds you of like a baked apple pie. What is it about baked apple pie that could be in that cup of coffee? Apple acidity, cinnamon, brown sugar, kind of grainy flavor will break down a lot of flavors that you would have never thought could be in coffee. From tobacco to leather to pomegranate, things that you just generally wouldn't expect to be in a cup of coffee. If you taste something and it's fruity but you can't pinpoint what fruit it is, elaborate a little further. A citrus fruit, a dried fruit, some kind of other fruit, berry fruit, until maybe you get somewhere that you wouldn't have thought of on your own. We are going to experience the dry fragrance of all of these coffees. We have two naturals on the table and then a blend, two blends that have naturals in them. And then the rest of the coffees are gonna be washed coffees. For a natural coffee, they pick the cherries straight off the tree, sort all of their cherries for ripeness, dry as a whole cherry. Generally, that's gonna take about four weeks. It builds up very complex, fruity, fermented, sweet profiles. More whiny taste to it, um, sometimes like a Malbec. Maybe not what you would associate your typical coffee with. The other type of coffees, wash coffees, where we have removed all of the fruit first, isolated the seeds. When we take these seeds out of the fruit, we don't just get the seed straight out. It's still covered in a bunch of fruity tissue that we call mucilage. We need to do something to remove this mucilage layer. Soak them in fermentation tanks and water for 24 to 36 hours, which gives us a very clean, bright, acidic coffee. And start our brewing cycle. So our ratio for cupping is 8.25 grams to 150 milliliters of water. One Brazilian coffee. Jeffrey, the owner of the company, went down and sourced directly from the farmer. So the difference in price points between an 84 point coffee and a 91, 13.50 per pound. And the global sea price of coffee is $1.30 to $1.40. So when we can take a farmer and remove them from that commodity based market, pay them 1,300% more. We are giving that farmer the resources to continue to grow a high quality coffee, to increase their livelihood, to hire more workers, to treat those workers better, to build better infrastructure. So what Taylor's doing right here is what we will be doing across the table. You're gonna take a spoon. We're gonna get just the bottom of the spoon in and smell. we have, it's still gonna taste like dark roast. It's a little sample, a slurp, and aspirate it all over our palate. So we get a full reading of this coffee. It is not uncommon to choke the first time you do this to the wild forest around the Great Red Valley there. Uh, this is here. 
Definitely a wash coffee, some very nice caramelized brown sugar in there. Just a strawberry bomb, strawberry and a blueberry, thick, thick body to it. Heavy mouthfeel, super great. Definitely like savory meatiness. I get a lot of like figgy beef broth, a little bit of a tobacco y kind of taste in there as well, but it's very bright. Well, this coffee with that, that one in it, and it'd be a totally different thing to show you the power of what blending can do. For espresso especially, it's really how you get what you want. You create that espresso. So that is 91. This one, whenever I cup it, 89, 89.5. The Germa's been cupping at 88, 89. Peru's been about 86, 87. That's Arado and that's cheap. Well, I really appreciate everyone turning out. And we will be continuing to do this at least once a month. Hey guys, so I just finished up the cupping at French Truck. They were really awesome, and actually they've invited me back. We might see some future videos on the channel here. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more content.